On today's episode, this midday matinee of Finside the NFL, we got a lot to talk about as the Miami Dolphins are showing some interest in drafting the CFL's most outstanding rookie of the year for this past season. Also, Raheem Moser, I told y'all he wasn't going to play on that on that old deal. I told you it just was not about to happen. And well, that has changed and now he's got a new deal. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll talk about the Miami Dolphins showing interest in a couple other interior prospects on both sides of the football. We got a lot to discuss. Please do me the favor, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. Is good, Fin Nation. What's good? It's your boy Reason, and we are back here for another one. Appreciate all of you for coming through today on this Easter weekend for this midday matinee. Y'all are amazing for doing so. Again, like I said, I appreciate each and every one of you for doing it. So please do me the favor as you come through, smash that like button, subscribe if you are new. As we just passed 15K, and I'm going to have a 15K giveaway coming up for all of y'all very soon. So get ready for that. Um, Man, let's, let's, you know, we haven't done it in a few weeks. Let's do it right now. We got over 100 of you in the chat. So shout out to Stetson O, Marino's Goat, Vicken, Pro Special, Adrian Gonzalez, Brad Martin, Knight, who gifted an NFL, a Finside the NFL membership to JDM Wizard. Shout out to you, Knight. Robert Thomason, Chuck Fins Up. Um, who else we got here going through? And here they all start coming now, eh? Daniel Meehan, how are you doing? Polly King 305, Mr. Success, Lord Ferguson of Aberdeen, Garn 79. Y'all, y'all be wilding out with some of these names. I swear to God, it's hilarious. I got a lord in my chat. Lords and ladies in my chat. Appreciate you. Shout out to Scorpion King 271, as well as Denisha. Told y'all I got lords and ladies in the chat. 6193 ASNF. What's going on, man? Shout out to all of you for taking some time out. Josh Hart, how are you? Thank y'all for taking some time out to come through. <laughs> this man. Love it. Love it. The Marino stuff. Kevin Williams, how you doing? Shout out to the mod squad that are in the chat. Shout out to all the channel members. Shout out to all the Patreons. And, you know, shout out to you just for watching, man. So, all right. Shout out to the finisher. What's going on, man? All right, man. Let's uh let, let's start this off here because I got I to, gotta, you know, if you didn't see yesterday, all right, if you didn't have a chance, um, Hassan Reddick, right? Hassan Reddick got traded um, to the Jets, and the Jets fans are out here acting like, you know, they won the Super Bowl. When they gave up a younger and quite frankly, at this stage of his career, arguably better pass rusher in Bryce Huff, he went to Philly and Hassan Reddick is now coming. And I'm seeing these Jets fans and how many times what's going on, guy? How many times do I got to remind these Jets fans that you're, you're banking on a 40 year old quarterback coming off an Achilles injury for never mind Hassan Reddick. I mean, 
let, let's not talk about that that you basically just did a swap and you lost the swap all right i don't know where jet jet fans are the last ones that should be out here talking any kind of crap to dolphin fans because i see it on x and such uh, let me know when you beat to a tongue of aloha huh like, let me know the same thing. You don't hear Patriot fans really talk about Tua, do you? Shout out to Jennifer Forbush, who's a Dolphin fan and a Patriot fan. Patriot fan. Like, you don't hear Patriot fans talking crap about Tua. How can they? No, you know, they had the best coach ever. And what happened? Tua whooped that ass every time they met him. All right. And the Jets fans, why is it, is it just the New York attitude being a little arrogant, a little cocky? Uh, you know, I don't get it. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't get it. Finisher says, I entertain a lot of BS on Twitter. I saw and, you know, I, 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 I see people don't even understand when you're not calling them the sharpest uh tool in the shed instead they throw you a like instead of understanding that you're talking about them huh finisher proving your point that they really aren't the sharpest knife in the shed or tool in the shed um you know so the jets i mean what what are we saying here like what are we saying here with the jets these guys out here talk like they're doing backflips like they, they, they got Hassan because they got Hassan Reddick. Are we serious? Is that where we're at right now? Man, I saw some I saw some Jets fans saying Tua going to be running for his life. Please. Why don't you go back and watch the tape? Uh, uh, Hassan Reddick didn't have his way with Austin Jackson. All right. So if you ain't got if you ain't able to have your way with Austin Jackson, please, uh, especially if, if you line him up on the other side, when a healthy Taron Armstead's out there and see what happens. Give me a break. You guys are fighting for third place in the division and y'all are out here, you know, talking smack to Dolphin fans. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. So Hassan Reddick, I say all that to say this. Hassan Reddick does not move the needle. Name me a Dolphin fan in the chat right now or on any platform that is sitting here, you know, chewing their fingernails, being like, oh, Hassan Reddick's in the division, please. Please, I'm going to tell you the best move one of the Dolphins AFC's rivals made this was the Bills. Now, I know ESPN gave it like a terrible grade. I think they gave it like a C. But Curtis Samuel, I'm telling you, low key, low key. I'm telling you, man, Curtis Samuel is a good move. That's a good move. You like that, huh? I just... You know, I'll post a picture of the three I just got in the mail. I just I just cop some some new lids and I had to go back, bro. The throwback 80s golfer style. Are you serious? Bro, and check this out. Look at the embroidment on the side. Oh, it's fire, bro. I'm gonna tell you this right now. It's a whew, it's it's a fire. And I got two other hats too to go with it. To go with the order. So appreciate you. I'm waiting for someone to notice that powerhouse. Appreciate you, dog. I'm not a fan of the draft. I I haven't liked a draft hat in years. I'm going to keep it a buck 50 with you. Everyone can tell right now, like, I'm a hat guy. All right? Y'all can tell already by, you know, the hats you see me rock on here, et cetera, et cetera. And y you haven't even seen half of my collection because I got a green screen behind me. But I got my new – I've been telling y'all I got my new background coming. When that new background comes, the collection's being busted out. Y'all haven't even seen half – of my of my collection you know i probably got about 35 40 dolphin hats i probably got about like you know 30 35 jays hats I probably have about 30 35 penguins hats i'm a hat guy so um y'all haven't even seen half so <clears throat> yeah so now when i buy hats over the last couple of years i've had to buy hats conscious like i buy you know, aqua hats, I wear off screen, but, you know, I've had to be conscious of my background with the hats that I've bought over the last couple of years. So, um, appreciate you for knowing that though, bro. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that very much. Anyways, threw me off. You threw me off, powerhouse. 
You sent me down. You sent me down, down a path. You threw me off. Huh? I totally forgot about what I was talking about. Now I know I'd, I'd finished talking about Hassan Reddick, but I was starting to segue into a new, into a new topic, and you totally threw me off. Out of boy. You did your job well today, Powerhouse. You did your job well, Reddick. Just a jag. For those of you who don't mean know what that means, that means just another guy. I agree. Okay, let me ask you this. Do they have an elite defense or an elite secondary? Let's ask the real question. Do they have an elite defense or an elite secondary? And even still, they get away with a lot of holds on the on the back end. But I'm just saying, go look at when we faced them last year. They were not good, you know. They were not good against the run when we lined up against them. Um, when you go back to what, uh, the last game we played them in week 15. So when we came into that week 15 game, they were fifth in total defense, but they were the number two passing defense. They were 28th against the run. The reason why they were the fifth is because they were number two passing defense and number eight scoring defense, but they were 28th against the run. Can you be an elite defense if you're 28th against the run? You know, we were the ninth total defense at the time. We were 12th against the pass, 7th against the run, 22 scoring. I wouldn't have called us elite. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm just saying, you know, Robert Sala is probably going to be gone in a couple. You know, this is probably, let's be honest, if nothing goes right, if nothing goes right this year, he's going to be gone. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. You know, it's it's going to be done. So then they'll be going through a whole rebuild, and that'll be just something pretty to watch for all of us Dolphin fans. So they're battling for third and fourth. Ain't nothing better than that. All right. Um, and then let's continue on here. Something I, I you know, I, I got I got to talk about. You know, who says Canadians can't play ball? Chase Claypool, for all of you wondering why the Miami Dolphins have not re-signed Chase Claypool, the word on the street is the BC Lions and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are in the mix for Chase Claypool. Yes, Chase Claypool may be going to the CFL, ladies and gentlemen. He is seriously considering it. He has offers on the table. And that tell what that tells you where he's at in terms of what NFL teams view him as right now. <laughs> the Shanghai Sharks. <laughs> oh my god. No, he's gonna end up in the fan controlled football league, Josh. Never mind the Shanghai Sharks. But yeah, that's the word on the street for all of you wondering, because you guys have been wondering what's gonna happen with the wide receiver room and stuff. And Chase Claypool apparently, you know. He might be uh, going to the CFL. Now, Powerhouse says, "What a, you know, talk about a downfall. You know, yeah, that's going backwards, but hey, I'm not going to say he's going to do it. Doug Flutie started in the NFL, went to the CFL, lit the CFL up, came back, and you, you saw what he was with uh, the Bills and stuff. He's certainly better than Rob Johnson. Holy jeez. Um, you know, so it's going to be a chance. Now I remember being excited when Ricky Williams came up here and that was a disaster. Ricky was not good up here in the CFL. Ricky was terrible in the CFL. He was God awful. Like he was bad. All right. I remember being super pumped that I was going to be able to see him live and he was just not good out here because you know, you got different rules, right? Three downs wider field, longer field. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, uh, he, he was just, he was not, I, he, he, he was not an ideal fit was Ricky Williams. So we'll see what Claypool is, you know, Hey, remember what Jeff Garcia was Jeff Garcia too, for the Calgary Stampeders and such lit it up in the CFL came to the NFL, played with the San Francisco 49ers, balled out with Terrell Owens, et cetera, et cetera, you know? So and we're going to get into the CFL today because the Miami Dolphins are eyeing 
a player from the CFL that they're going to have to scoop up in the draft if they want him. So let's get into everything here. Let's start it off. And let's start it off with the first thing on the docket, that being Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert agreed to terms on a new two-year deal worth $9.075 million max, a source said. One of the most productive in the NFL gets rewarded at age 21. Did I or did I not tell y'all this was going to happen? I've been saying this for months that this was going to happen because there was no way that I, I've been telling y'all for months on this channel. There was no way he was going to play this season out with no guaranteed money on his deal. I've been telling all y'all this for uh, how long? Eight, nine weeks, maybe 10 weeks. I've been telling y'all for quite some time that this, that there was no way he was playing on that new, on that, on that old deal. No way. And now here we go. Now, of that, you know, up to nine point zero seven five million, about three point seven one million is new in guaranteed money. Remember, he didn't even have a million dollars worth of guaranteed money left. Didn't even have a million of guaranteed. He had like three or three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand in terms of guaranteed money left on his contract. And so they've rewarded him with over about, you know, when you do the math, he's gained of you know over three million in new money. Actually, I stand corrected. He had no guaranteed money left. So it's about, it's a full 3.71. Remember, he had that two-year, $5.6 million deal that he signed last year, and he had no guaranteed money. It was all, just like Jeff Wilson, it was all in year one. So there you go. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Remember, they've also reworked the money with Wilson. He accepted a pay cut from $2.6 million down to $1.125 million. You know, that dropped his cap hit from $3.68 million to about $2.357. And in exchange for doing that, what did they do? They gave him $400,000 guaranteed. And it wasn't going to be guaranteed. So they gave him a $400,000 $400, guarantee for, for playing ball with them. Now you got Mozart. I'm going to tell you this right now, Okay. For a team that only has a pick in the first and second round and then doesn't pick again till the fifth and then picks in the sixth and the seventh, unless it's a UDFA, I don't see them adding another running back to this room. I think, you know, I think A Chan's workload's going to increase this year. That's a natural progression that I think we're going to see. So I think you're going to see A Chan's workload progress this year. My only thing here is this is what I got. Chris Brooks is a really our only power back when you break it down. And, you know, it's not like he's oozing experience. A lot of people wanted them to add Derrick Henry. And not only did they not add Derrick Henry, not only did they not add a single new body so far to this point, but they've actually technically, you know, Mostert, his new money kind of offsets what they did with Wilson. They really haven't even spent any money on the position. They've shown no sign of budging off what they did last year at the position. They, they you know, talk about running back. They've shown that they're running back the same running back room. That's that's the signal they've sent. Now, will they add a UDFA? I'm sure they'll add a UDFA. I'm almost positive they'll add a UDFA. But they've even brought back Salvin Ahmed. Like, they've even brought back pra practice squad bodies is what my whole point is. Now, if someone falls in the fifth round that, oh my God, maybe they maybe they pull the trigger. But I'll tell you this much, I wouldn't hold my breath. Now, I say all that to say this. You ain't going to find a bigger Devin A. Chan fan in this fan base than me. 
you know, all the Chris Brooks fans and believers after one year will agree too. And then Raheem the Dream and Jeff Wilson, their careers proved what they are. Last year, every running back battled injuries. Every running back we had missed time due to an injury. A-Chan dealt with injuries for the first time he had, he didn't have, you know, really at the professional level. He never had an injury. He had to really battle at Texas A&M, like what he's battling last year. You know, they talked about it, how he was learning his body because this is the first time he was really battling, you know, real injuries here. Injuries that could cost you games and cost you time. You know, Chris Brooks, for as big as he is, you know, pause. He, he dealt with injuries, right? He dealt with injuries, I should say. So my whole my whole point by saying all that is yeah, you know, Moser scored as many touchdowns as he scored, 21 touchdowns. That's fantastic. Rushed for over 1000 yards, that's fantastic. We didn't get any durability certainty by not adding anyone new. Remember me and Neil on this channel wanted to add Jonathan Taylor last off season. Why? Because what did we saw in 20? What, what, what did we see in 2021? Sorry, 2022 in 2022. Jeff Wilson did nothing in the playoff game. Raheem Moser couldn't even suit up. What happens this year in 2023? Moser gets banged up at the end of the year. He suits up for the playoff game, but he might as well not have. While well, A-Chan was battling injuries as well. Listen, when we're when you're going to be heading into the playoffs now, because we are a playoff team, we are play, you know two years in a row now. We are consistent playoff. We're turning into a consistent playoff contender here. All right, now we want to turn into a consistent Super Bowl contender, but we're playoff contender right now as it speaks. There's no doubt about that. You have to have a sureties at that position. Like, you cannot win in the playoffs without a run game. And I don't mean a mobile quarterback because they don't win. But you got to be able to run the ball. Kansas City, Pacheco, San Fran, McCaffrey. Then you go to the AFC Championship, all right? The Ravens. They're a run-first team even when they have Gus Edwards. Now they've added Derrick Henry. Flip side, look at the investment the Lions have made in Jameer Gibbs. you got to be able to run the football in the playoffs. you got to be healthy enough to run the football in the playoffs because you're going to take a beating. And that's the one area in the running back room we have not addressed. A-Chan got banged up in his first year. Brooks got banged up in his first year. Salvin Ahmed. <laughs> and then Wilson was banged up. And then he came back. And Raheem Moser got banged up by the end of the season because of the workload. It's great that we have all this talent. Because we have the, the talent is undeniable between Mostert and A Chan, et cetera, et cetera. But you gotta have the durability to go with that talent. It's the same reason why people are hesitant in this fan base to be okay with this team paying to a tongue of Some people are hesitant because we haven't seen the durability. We've only seen it for one year. Hell, these two guys have been here, Wilson and Mostert have been here for two years. They haven't, neither one has played a full season yet. Neither one. Just saying. So, listen, I want to say, say this as well. I told all y'all he would not play on that old contract. But above all else, what makes me the happiest is that it didn't become a distraction. It didn't drag out. It didn't hit the media. They handled it privately and nothing leaked out until it was done. 
He didn't make a big huff and puff deal about it. He got his new money. And shout out to Raheem Mostert for being a team player. I got, I'm going to say this. Classy by the player. Classy by the organization. Pure class on how that was handled. Pure class on how that was taken care of. And pure class how it was announced. So I got to give them their props. And I got to give them their flowers for that. Shout out to you, Raheem Mostert. Glad to have you back. Let's get 25 touchdowns this year. But, you know, watch out for that boy, Devin. He's coming up for more snaps, baby. So shout out to Raheem Mozart. I agree with what Mr. Success is. Raheem is a great leader for the younger guys. Locker room glue. I agree. That's the type of, that's the type of leader you want a guy like Devin A. Chan coming up behind. Developing behind. Growing behind. That's the type of guy you want is Raheem Mostert. I got nothing but respect for that man, for his ability on the field and for how he handled the situation. And you know what? You know why I talk about the durability? I'll tell you why I talk about the durability of Raheem Mostert. Because if Raheem Mostert is durable and plays the whole season and plays the playoffs, he can play at top eight back level. He will give you top eight production. So I know he's 31, but you know, if he plays, if he can play a full season from weeks one to 17 and into the playoffs, Raheem Moser, you know, I think that's what bothers people about him not being durable enough. He's a game breaker and an impact player when he is. And you know. If you can stay healthy. We need that impact player. And that game breaker. In the playoffs. We would have. Let's be honest. We needed a healthy Raheem Mostert. For that weather in Kansas City. We needed that. So. Anyways. Let's keep it rolling and let's get into something here for all of y'all. The Miami Dolphins. Next up for rising NFL draft 2024 cornerback Quantez Stiggers. An April 1st visit with the Dolphins after Lions and Texans visits per his, his agent Fred Lyles. Now you're going to say who is. Quantez Stiggers. Well, Quantez Stiggers, and why is he in the draft? People are going to say, why is he in the draft? Why is he in the draft? What's going on here? First of all, shout out to Brad Martin. He just donated five Inside the NFL memberships. Mr. Success, Adrian Gonzalez, Joey LaSalle, Matt Farms, and Aaron Jones. Shout out to Brad Martin for spreading the love around the community. Shout out to Brad Martin. So, Quantez Stiggers. All right, six foot, just under 200 pounds, about 197. Now, he signed with the Toronto Argonauts in the Canadian Football League in January of 2023. All right, now, remember, he dropped out of college. This guy's got a backstory, all right? He was playing, you know, he was a freshman at Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee. And his father passed away in 2020. September 2020, his father passed away. And he dropped out of college. He was on a scholarship to Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee. And he dropped out after his father passed away due to complications from a car accident. And... You know, another thing too, like, you know, one of his brothers, you know, had a, had a serious spinal cord injury while playing football. This man's been through it, okay? Now, in 20, you know, in 2022, he joined, he tried out for the Fan Controlled Football League. It's an indoor football league that all y'all know. And he played during that season and he caught the attention of 
a former Toronto Argonauts offensive coordinator, suggested, hey, you should go try out for the Canadian Football League. He did. He was expected to be cut, but he wasn't. He made the he made the roster. And he became a regular starter, man. He played 16 games. He had 53 tackles, three special teams tackles, and five interceptions. Above all that, he was chosen as the CFL's most outstanding rookie. That's their version of the rookie of the year. Just to tell you, the last time the Miami Dolphins signed or brought on a former outstanding rookie award winner, it was Cam Wake. Cam Wake in the CFL was the most outstanding rookie in 2007. And you know what's even crazier about what Quantez did? All right? You want to know what's even what's crazier about what Quantez Stiggers did? All right? Check this one out. Y'all going to like this one. All right? When you look at it, first of all, he was huge in the East-West Shrine Bowl, which is kind of like, uh, you know, it's the set, it's the tier down from the – um. You know, you know, we got that the Senior Bowl. Well, the East West is, you know, another version of that. Anyways, what's great? What's crazy about him? What's crazy about what Quantez Stiggers did? I want y'all to think about how big this was. All right, this was a big. This was a big, big thing of him being the CFL's most outstanding um, rookie last year. All right, he's the first defensive back to win that award since 1998 when a BC Lion player by the name of Steve Muhammad won it. So he did, did something that hadn't been done in almost 30 years as a rookie. Now, you watch the tape of the of, of Stiggers, all right? Obviously, he's got a good feel for the football, all right? Good instincts, shows good instincts. You know, He's a good coverage guy, but also I'll say this. He has a lot of support in the run game, right? He's got a quick trigger downhill and he can lay the hammer. He can lay the freaking hammer. Now he's going through the draft though. This is, I, I think, you know, I, I don't think he's going to make it as a UDFA. I think he's going to get drafted. I think he's going to be, if you want my opinion, I think you're going to see him going probably on day three. Um, but I, I do not think he, I do not think he goes undrafted. I think he goes, the reason why he's going into the draft after playing the CFL is because he never played in college, right? He dropped out of college. He never finished college. And teams are, they fell in love with him at the East West Shrine Bowl. That's why I'm saying I don't think he goes UDFA because he caught a lot of eyes at the East West Shrine Bowl and then he has CFL film to back that up. And there's there's a lot of buzz about him right now. So, I, you know, I'm not sitting here saying we're even going to pick him. I'm just saying I think he goes day three. So, um, yeah. I mean, you look at the guy, man. He can he can lay the he can lay the hammer, he can lay the hammer, and you know, good in coverage, offers something in run support. So, you know, very interesting. And like I said, hey, the last time the Dolphins brought on a former CFLer who won the most outstanding rookie award, that was Cam Wake. So, hey. Shout out to the Dolphins for going north of the border, baby. I love it. Garn, it's because it, it's just because of college. Look at the CFL as his college tape. That's what you that that's I never said he goes round three. I said day three, bro. I never once said round three. I said day three. <clears throat> um yeah, it's because he never played ball. It's because he never played. He didn't finish college. He was a freshman. He dropped out as a freshman. So that's why. I think he's going to go in the sixth or the seventh. That's why I think he's going to go. <clears throat> so that, that listen, 
you know, hey, I didn't know that I had never even th- thought about that either. And then when I looked into his back and I saw he dropped out as a freshman, I was like, okay, now that's why. So, yeah, <clears throat> I think uh, there's a lot of buzz created by him right now and he's got pro film. So it's going to be interested to see what 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 goes on with with this moving forward. But an interesting thing about this is it tells you like you know the Miami Dolphins, they're one of those teams that could take a sixth or seventh round flyer on a corner. It seems they're they you know they've been sniffing around a few corners, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll be interesting to see. If someone's trying to guarantee me in the chat something about the draft. Okay. The day I listen to someone in my chat about the draft is the day I stop doing this. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting with him. You know, listen, the Miami Dolphins at the end of the day, we need more depth at corner right now. We we need more depth at corner right now. That's just, that's just a fact of where we're at right now. And, you know, and we're going to talk about corner here because we, I'm going to wait till you see what I show you. But I mean, you look at it right now, right? I mean, we need depth at safety, I think too, but you know, you got Kendall Fuller, Cam Smith, Ethan Bonner, um, Jalen Ramsey, Nick Needham, Cater Kohu, Siren Neal, right? So, you know, there's going to be more bodies coming into battle here. I don't think, I know everyone liked what we saw from Ethan Bonner last year and he's going to be given another chance, but, you're going to be in a battle kid. You know what I mean? I think when you look at the locks, you're talking about like Kendall Fuller, um, Cam Smith, Jalen Ramsey, Nick, uh, Nick Needham. Isn't, is Nick Needham even a lock? You know, we think he's a lock, but if they bring in someone who shines, you never know. And, and I'm saying that not, that's not a slight on Nick Needham. That's a realistic outlook at his contract situation. Right. And then Cater Kohu and Siren Neal. So, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, where I'm interested in is we need, we need a safety. We have, we don't, you know, right now, Jordan Poyer, Elijah Campbell, and Javon Holland. I've told all y'all, that's why I'm added. I've added that to my big board list. You tell me we aren't adding a safety in this draft, you know, and I'll show you beachfront property in Alaska. You know what I mean? So, like, we need a safety and we need one bad right now. So, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But we need a safety. We need one bad right now, even for depth purposes. Never mind a legitimate number two behind Holland. You know, we need one. We need bodies. So, you know, because of our picks only having a, a first, a second, you know, and then picking not till round five, you're going to see late round additions and UDFAs galore. It's going to be another big UDFA class. We've seen this recently, right? Where we've had bigger than, and you know, it just ends up more work for me and more film to watch for me. But, you know, we're going to be dealing with another UDFA, a pretty big UDFA class, I think. So... I'm interested to see, you know, this kid's good. Quantez Stiggers is good, man. You know, I went back um, and I watched a little bit of him yesterday when I saw that report come out last night. I was, you know, I, I uh, your boy fell asleep early and woke up in the middle of the night and said, you know what? What else do I got to do right now? So I threw on some Quantez Stiggers and I was watching him a little bit. And, you know, I like what I saw, you know, not a he, he's not a day one or day two pick by any stretch of the imagination right now. But I, I could see him because of the buzz rising and because of what he did in the CFL last year. I could see him being a day three. Remember, the guy ran a four four five. All right, at his pro day. He ran a four four five. Like, <laughs> all right, you got four four speed too, and you got and you got a little bit of pro film. I'm telling you. And when you watch the film, he lays it. And he's got a quick trigger, man. Quick trigger. Quick trigger. So, we'll see. That could be another guy, too. If you watch how he's used a little bit, too, he could be another guy that, you know, they could flex out to safety. 
<laughs> this Brad Martin, appreciate it. this guy saw the hat, said, Let me go cop that right now. They're almost gone. I'm telling you, it's fire, bro. It's fire. All right. Let's uh let's let's keep it moving here with everything. Um let's get into uh speaking of prospects, a couple guys I want to talk about that the Miami Dolphins have done uh, they've met with and they're one player I've talked about, one player I will talk about um because I'm not going to be dropping a uh center big board now instead I'm doing offensive tackle and offensive guard. Um so let's start off with this one as the Miami Dolphins showing some interest in some interior prospects on both sides of the football. So notes from Northern Iowa pro day shrine star bowl star Christian Boyd, who remember I had on my DT rankings, the defensive tackle from Northern Iowa was unable to work out on March 18th after suffering a strained hamstring in, in training. He'll perform for scouts on April 8th at Iowa. The date Cooper Dijon is working out. Oh, my God. Cooper Dijon. I'm telling you, that guy's a beast. Iowa was initially hesitant to allow Boyd to participate in the workout, yet I'm told overwhelming requests by scouts that he be allowed to participate swayed the school's decision. Boyd is close to 100% from the hamstring issue, and the only thing that could hold him back is excessive travel. Boyd presently has 15 official 30 visits was and was forced to turn down six requested visits due to his heavy travel schedule. Among the teams Boyd will visit include the Miami Dolphins, Baltimore Ravens, Buffalo Bills, and the Seattle Seahawks. The New York Jets have also shown a lot of interest in Boyd, who is expected to be selected in the fourth round, if not late third round area. So there you go. You're hearing day two to day three buzz on Christian Boyd from Tony Pauline. I'm telling you this DT class, we got some talent in this, in, in this class for sure. And if you remember with Christian Boyd, he was my 14th, um, defensive tackle, um, six, two, three 20. You know, he fits that mold as a one tech can slide out as a three. Um, you know, he could replace a guy like Raekwon Davis at zero tech if you need him to, um, you know, due to the fact he's a little shorter, it gives him better leverage with his anchor, pretty strong center of gravity. Here's the thing. He doesn't offer a ton of upside as a pass rusher, right? He really just relies on his bolt rush. Um, you'll get pressures, won't finish. Um, so, but you know, he's got the power to take on double teams, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that's an interesting, interesting one for me. And he's someone, if you watch my DT tackle, my graphic, I screwed the name up on, uh, but yeah, Christian Boyd, uh, I'm a fan of that. You know, that's a guy, if you can get him on day three, I like it. I like him. Um, so I I'm a fan of him. Um, we'll see how it goes, but you know, yeah, you know, that's a guy where if he's around in the fifth, you know, sniff around, you know, we don't have a fourth round pick. That's the reality of the situation, right? We just don't have a fourth round pick right now. So, you know, but listen, again, they're doing their due diligence. Even after adding all those bodies, even after adding all those bodies, they ain't joking around. So, hey, I'm here for it, baby. I'm here for it. All right. Let's keep it rolling here for you guys. Another interior prospect, but on the opposite side of the football. Um, Brian Hudson had his pro day, had that 9.5 broad, had a 29-inch vert, had a 5.2340, a 1.85 10-yard split, a 4.5 short shuttle, 7.56 um, three-cone. All right. Now, scouts from all 30... Team, two teams were present. Hudson chatted with the Dolphins, the Jags, and the Chargers. Now, he's my 13th ranked center. All right. Um, with him, you know, he's a pretty sound run blocker, decent in pass pro. He does fit an outside zone scheme. Um, he's average at best in terms of explosion off the line of scrimmage and reaching second level blocks. 
He's a late day three year UDFA pick. That's what I have him as. Now, if you're to plug his pro day numbers in, um, you know, his speed, his composite speed grade would be okay. His composite agility grade would be great, you know, with his shuttle and his three cone. His explosion grade would be great. You know, I see what you see in the vertical. The 29 inch vertical is just okay. And that's, you know, and that's, you know, that's a, that's a number that's supposed to represent explos explosiveness, right? And you see, I see more of his vertical as opposed to his broad off the line of scrimmage, you know, um, that broad of nine, uh, you know, his broad, it would be, would be considered great or uh, elite, you know, for his size. Um, but his vertical is not very good. And I see more of the vertical than I do, um, you know, the broad jump when I, I look at him as an exp in terms of explosiveness as an athlete. Again, he's my 13th ranked center. That tells you where I view him. I view him as a day three guy. I, I you know, or a UDFA. I don't view him as a, as one of those first two days. <laughs> Brad Martin says, thanks, Reason. I just spent $200 on hats. Oh, brother. How do you think it, I felt with the exchange rate? I got about three. And it ended up costing me just around that. So, um, with shipping and everything, <laughs> love it, bro. Was, hey, I'm here to inspire, baby. I'm here to inspire. You already know what time it is. So the Miami Dolphins doing their due diligence on both sides of the ball, looking at prospects and even, Hey, bringing in a potential answer with, uh, to the DB depth. If, if Quantes is, you know, if stickers is on the board, man, on day three, there you go. All right, so continuing on, I wanted to show you the guys this. I dropped it already on Twitter, but y'all are my, my y'all hey, my YouTube fan. Y'all, y'all the ones that have my heart. So here's my man crush list for all of you wondering. You know who are reasons guys of this draft. I uh, you know I I completed it like. Last week or two weeks, I, I finally got it all set up. So I decided to drop it. Here's my man crush list. You know, Drake May and Jaden Daniels. Listen, for me, all right, when you look at, um, you know, everyone who's been watching me since 2020 knows I've been in love with Jaden Daniels since I watched him beat Herbert in Oregon on a Friday night. It was amazing. And he just balled out, out -dual. He was just out of control that game. He was amazing. He was absolutely amazing, all right? And it just brings me such happiness to put him on here as we get, uh, you know, as we get close to the draft. For running back, uh, Jalen Wright and Trey Benson, I love both of these guys' games, but I don't. we're not going to have a chance to draft either one, or, nor would we. Why? Because of where we're at with our running back room. Wide receiver, Xavier Leggett, Ladd McConkey. Um... Everyone knows how I feel about Leggett. That's my guy. Leggett is my guy. Everyone knows that. There ain't no secret about that. He's been my guy since the Senior Bowl. Leggett is that dude. And, man, you add him to this offense. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Lad McConkey. you all know how I feel about him. He's another one of those my guys. I think he's a perfect slot option. Um, that guy's just a beast. Technical route, technical route runner. So sound, so crisp with it. Just a stud. Tight end. You know, another one is my guy in this draft that people are going to say is Brock Bowers because of how long I've been talking about him. Uh, Bowers is that dude. You know, if, if he slides out of 15, you got to think about moving up. Ben Sinote, um, you know, out of Kansas State, absolute monster, absolute beast, can do everything for you, everything for you. A tackle to Lise Fuaga from Oregon State, Nolu Fashnu from Penn State. Um, you know, I've been talking about Olu for quite some time, and man, and, and when I heard rumors of him potentially dropping, my I started licking my chops. Talise has has risen. Olu might have dropped a bit, but either way, you couldn't go wrong with either one of those guys that they fell in your lap. I don't think they will, though. Obviously, um, at guard, another guy I've been hyping up for months and months. Christian Haynes out of UConn, love his game. Love him as an interior selection at 55 if he's on the board. Another guy who I really love, Mason McCormick from South Dakota State. You know, you know, you might have team played for a team called the Jack Rabbits, but there ain't nothing soft like Bunny Fur about his game. Absolutely love Mason McCormick. Um, at center, Zach Frazier. I'm a sucker 
for wrestlers. I'm a sucker for wrestlers. Okay. And you're talking about an elite level wrestler. Zach Frazier is going to be a monster at the next level. Quote me here. Book market, whatever you want to do. Zach Frazier is going to be a freaking stud. Andrew Rame, another guy who I'm I'm high on, and I think I'm higher on than maybe some other people. But he's my sixth center, uh, Andrew Rame out of Oklahoma. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I'm a fan of his game. I like what I saw when I watched the tape. On defensive line, listen, I would have Johnny Newton here, but that's Neil Driscoll's boy. I'm not trying to infringe on his territory. But if Neil hadn't, you know then Newton would be here. But because I don't want to infringe, I got Braden Fisk um, out of FSU and Mason Smith. Y'all already heard me talk about them and hype them up during the DT all 22 big fan edge. Another one of those got these, another position where I've got two strong, my guys that if you've been watching me, I've been talking about them for months. Chop Robinson, Leatu Latu. My God, give me either one of those guys at edge and let's, let's, let's play some football, baby. Woo! Woo! Love both of those players. Linebacker. Um, yeah, you know, I've been hyping them and you know, I've I've been loving them. I got to give my guy and and he's my and he's my linebacker one, Peyton Wilson, baby. Peyton Wilson's that dude. If that guy stays healthy and the injury bug doesn't get him at the next level, talk about a special player. Um, another guy who I, I talked about recently um when me and Neil were up here, yeah, I fell in love with the film. Tyron Hopper out of Missouri. You know, that guy. Oh, I'm a big fan. I don't know what's with me and Mizzou linebackers over the last couple of years, but feed me, feed me, feed me. All right. I snuck Cooper Dijon in at corner and at safety because that man is the definition of a defensive back. That man is a freaking baller, all right? I don't know what else to say. Another guy who I like is, you know, you're, all of like, who's Had, Haddon, Haddon, Haddon? Kamal Haddon, man. I'm telling you, this kid can ball, all right? When you watch his film from Tennessee, this kid can ball, all right? And he is a ball hawk, all right? And this guy's come o overcome serious injury. I'm a fan of Kamal Haddon when I watch. This kid is a baller, baby. He might be one of the most underrated and under-talked about prospects at the cornerback position right now in this draft. And I'm hitching the wagon to Haddon. This kid's a baller, baby. And then at safety, another guy who's not getting a lot of talk. And, you know, I know the Miami Hurricane fans, they love Cam Kitchens. You know, everyone else is talking about Nubins. Um, you know what I mean? Everyone else wants to talk about, you know, my boy Cooper Dijon who can who can play at safety. You know, or you talk about the Cole Bishops and the Javon Bullards and the Jaden Hickses. Dadrian Taylor Demison from Texas Tech. If you want some fun film, if you want to watch a guy that might be another one of the most underrated defensive backs in this draft class put on the Taylor Demison, Texas tech tape and you will fall in love. I'm telling you right now, he is a monster monster. So those are my man crushes of this draft. Just keeping y'all up to date, just keeping y'all informed so you guys know exactly what's going on with my mind and where I'm at. Now, ESPN, they decided to give some grades. I see y'all talking about Xavier Worthy in the in the in the chat. At 165 pounds, you better be able to run a 421. Give me Xavier Leggett at 221 who runs a 439, baby. All right? Who are you going to be afraid of coming downhill? 165 pounds soaking wet guy who runs 42 or a guy who runs a 439 and is 221. I'm just saying. Give me I listen. And everyone knows I got to be objective and consistent. When you turn on the worthy film, y'all think we got drop issues with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle? This guy's con concentration drop 101. Please. 
No, Xavier Worthy. Pass. Anyways, there were some grades handed out by some of the big moves by ESPN. And on the deal with the Dolphins and Kendall Fuller, it got a B minus from ESPN. Now, if y'all remember the free agency grades that I had, right? And where I sat with the Kendall Fuller grade, for me, the Kendall Fuller grade hadn't had it. I don't think it had yet yeah, had right. Um, the free agency with me in terms of Kendall Fuller and my grade for Kendall Fuller, if I remember correctly, it was. Da, 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 da. Let me just pull it up here. My free agency grades were. I gave Kendall Fuller an A minus, so we're a full letter score off. Now this is what they said, but they they uh, I'm gonna tell you this right now, they were harsh, and I'll show you why in a second. After releasing veteran Xavier Howard in a cap saving move before free agency, the Dolphins brought in a potential starting quarterback in Fuller. Um, Fuller, 29 year old who has played eight NFL seasons, spent the past four seasons with the Washington Commanders, where he grabbed two interceptions last season and had ten picks in his four years with the club. He'll look to boost a Miami secondary that finished 15th um, in NFL passing yards allowed per game at 221.2 and had 15 interceptions, but saw Howard, Brandon Jones, and Deshaun Elliott depart this offseason. Fuller will be given a chance to start opposite the Jalen Ramsey at outside corner with Cater Coe, who locked in as the starting nickelback. That's an ideal fit for Fuller from a scheme perspective as he only took 29 snaps, 26 snaps to saw cornerback in 15 games last year. Corner was a big need in Miami, and Fuller allows a contending Dolphins team to roll out veterans at each of the three starting positions next season while giving them flexibility to draft a young outside prospect in April. I don't know what this guy's talking about. We're not, you know, financially paying a little more than $8 million per year on an average on average is a solid deal for a starting level cornerback. Fuller would rank as the fourth highest paid cornerback on the open market, slotting behind Awuze, Kenny Moore, and Sean Murphy Bunting while edging out Darius Williams, who signed with the Rams for an average of about $7.5 million per year. All in all, it's a good move by Miami. Fuller is a scheme and alignment fit. The money fits with his ability and experience, and most importantly, defending AFC's champions. What is he talking about? Okay, look at they call this the defending AFC's champions. I don't know what they're talking about. So we didn't win, and he said without feeling pressure to use their first round pick on the position. I don't know what this guy's talking about. A, we didn't win the AFC East. B, we drafted Cam Smith last year, so we're not about to draft one. So I have no idea what that man is talking about in the slightest at all. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. Second I'm going to thing I'm going to say is if you thought that grade was harsh, all right? Let me read to you what they gave. They gave Robert Hunt that deal a C minus. And if you go read it, they basically called Robert Hunt average. They gave that a C minus. Now, for all of you that were crying about Christian Wilkins, they gave that a C plus. And they said, was it worth it? The Raiders certainly needed an upgrade to the roster, but this strikes me as a shade rich. So the Fuller move got graded better from ESPN than the Wilkins signing by the Raiders and the Hunt signing by the Panthers. Again, more proof. Don't let these people try to fear monger you that Miami hasn't made good good moves in free agency. They made good, smart, strategic moves and they spent their money well. Just saying. Shout out to all y'all. Over 340 of you in the room on YouTube. Appreciate each and every one of you for coming through. Do me the favor. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. Man, I hope all of you continue to have a blessed Easter weekend. I hope all of you and your little ones enjoy your Easter egg hunts. 
tomorrow morning if you do them on Sunday. And listen, um, I'm going to be back um, in the next few days. We're going to be doing my Edge Big Board this week. I'm going to be looking to drop that on Monday or Tuesday. And, you know, on top of that, we're going to be covering all the latest as we start to officially enter April, meaning we are less than a month away from the first round of the NFL draft. Gotta love it. As always, you already know what time it is. Fins up all day, every day. I appreciate each and every one of you that came through. And shout out tonight, um, you know, for the donations and the memberships. And shout out to Brad Martin for the memberships as well. Love all y'all. And yo, you can donate by just smashing that like button and subscribing if you're new. It'll only take you three seconds and it costs you nothing. Fins up, baby. I'll see y'all on the next one. Until then, take it easy, everyone.